Welcome everyone to History Gone Wilder, part of Half History Old Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and I wanted to do a quick video highlighting the trip I took to Fargo, North Dakota and Minnesota, where I attended a history conference and then visited a national park. In September 2022, a Society for Military History panel at the Northern Great Plains History Conference chose me to be one of the panelists to discuss my recent work. The paper I chose to present basically condensed my entire dissertation into about eight pages, entitled Infantry Would Not Do, Mountain Warfare, and Its Impact on the Outcome of the American Civil War. In summary, I basically outlined the agricultural production of East Tennessee and what its resources meant to the Confederacy. Because of the Union Army's major attempt to invade the region ended in failure due to attempting to use military strategy and tactics used on more flatter terrain to maneuver through the Cumberland Plateau of Appalachia, the second major attempt presents a change in tactics to mountain warfare in order to successfully invade East Tennessee. I highlight the tactics used and emphasize that with that agriculturally rich region secured by the Union in 1863, it represented a significant nail in the coffin of the Confederacy. I presented my paper on Thursday, September 22nd in Fargo, North Dakota. The next day, I decided to drive south to Popstone, Minnesota to visit Popstone National Monument. As many of you know, it is my goal to visit all the National Park units. The visit to Popstone made number 85. I arrived on a cold day and I was not prepared for Minnesota weather, with the weather in southwest Virginia slash East Tennessee being rather hot this year, but that did not stop me from enjoying the outside parts of the park but first, I checked out the visitor center. Inside, I found that Popstone National Monument is an active quarry site. Native Americans have quarried the Popstone, also called Catlinite, from the area for thousands of years, and the National Park Service allows federally recognized tribes and their members to continue to quarry Popstone. Native Americans use the stone to make pops for personal as well as ceremonial use. Since that type of stone can only be found in Central North America, specifically in the southwestern tip of Minnesota, it makes the history of that stone and Native Americans that much more interesting because archaeological digs around the United States and Mexico unearthed these pop stones. Not only did Native American peoples travel to pop stone to quarry catlinite, they traded these pops and stones to other groups, which resulted in stones being found thousands of miles away from dig sites, further illustrating the advanced trade networks present in North America before and after European settlement. The reason that popstone is so important to making pops is its strength, yet a person can easily shape it or mold it into anything desired. Probably the greatest thing about the visitor center is that live demonstrators create pops, effigies, and ornaments right before your eyes. The two people I met were Jackie Martin and Travis Erickson. Jackie is a fourth generation artist of popstone crafts and a wonderful storyteller. I listened to her for over 30 minutes talking about what the popstone means to her and hearing her stories of how she came to be an artist. Here is a clip of our conversation. And owls and stuff like that. And then she, um, she wanted me to learn how to do a turtle. And I struggled with that for a long time because, it, you know, I just didn't want to be a turtle. And um, I was about ready to quit. And the day I went to her shop and made up my mind that it was either going to be a turtle that day or I was done. Three hours later I had a turtle. But, so it, it must have been waiting for me to decide that, you know, that's what it was going to be. When we finished talking, she had completed an effigy of a turtle and gave it to me. I can't thank her enough for what she does, keeping the art form and the culture alive. I talked to Travis next. He is also a fourth generation artist and learned the basic techniques from his mother before teaching himself how to craft these ornate pops. His works are featured at the Smithsonian Institute. After talking with Travis, Jackie, and a few of the rangers, I headed outside to visit the quarries. The day I went, groups of people could be found quarrying outside in the cold, a testament to how much the land and the stones mean to them. After that, I ate at 8th Avenue Diner in Popstone, which served me an excellent burger, then I drove back to Fargo, where I flew back home the next day. It was a successful trip and I thoroughly enjoyed myself at the conference, making contact from all around the world and visiting Popstone National Monument. If you have not been, I highly recommend that you take a trip there. You will not regret it. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.